Hey guys, what is going on? This is Ip of Rage Quit TV. Gonna be casting a game between Liquid Genro and this Zerg player. I have no clue who this is. I believe his name has two meanings. In noun form, it could be potato. In a verb form, it could be like Titan or to like wrap up type deal. Um, my Hangul is really rusty. I haven't got to study it for the past month or two. So, um, very bad uh, translations, I am assuming. But, uh, yeah. If you can confirm that in the comments below, that would be much appreciated. It is a ZVT on Taldrim Altar. And we'll see exactly how this game does play out. Juno going to be building the 10 Supply Depot because, well, why not? We don't have a 9 Overlord going down. Instead, it is a 10 Overlord, which means uh, Potato may be just going for the Extractor Trick as he is doing. And there we go. The Extractor Trick does go down, and he immediately goes out to Scout at 11. And I like this on Taldrim Altar. A lot of players kind of scout at 13. It's really map dependent when you scout. Your goal for scouting is to get into the base. And Taldrim Altar is a really large map and relatively easy to wall off. So the chances of you getting in the base is slim to none. If you do like a 13 or 14 drone scout and see them last, I don't think you will get a chance to see what time their barracks finishes, which means that, hey, you could uh, have went gas first, and I wouldn't know that. And that is such a valid opener in TVZ, just because a lot of Zerg players kind of go with that Spanishawa style, and by that I mean just delaying their gas for a long, long time, which means if Hellions get in, they can do a terrible amount of damage, and Taldrim Alta is one of the easier maps to do Hellion run buys. Do have the drone just getting a scout. Can see the timing on about everything. Barracks now going to be finishing, and the drone going to harass this SV a little bit more. Just wants to make sure that Marine does pop out and Tech Lab doesn't go down. If a Tech Lab did go down, then uh, a Zerg player would know. Oh, does get surrounded, but manages to get out with 2 HP. But as I was saying, if a Tech Lab did come out, then it would be kind of like a Reaper expand build, and he'd have to keep an eye out on like this area for any type of bunkers, because you see his Overlord not going to protect this one base. Where is that next Overlord going? Has he built it yet? No, he hasn't, but he doesn't have an Overlord watching this one base, so there could be a bunker going up. He did get a count on the SCVs, but if he miscounted, you know, the bunker could come up, and if a Reaper does come out, the chances of a bunker being, like, right here is very, very high. So we want to make sure the Marine does come out, not a Tech Lab. To go for that Reaper early on. Did see the gas, so he knows it's not a one rack expand, which means the Hellions will be getting to his base just before the six minute mark, which means his bind crawler should probably go down at five minutes and 15 seconds, I am going to say. I believe that's on this spawn location. We do have Juno with that kind of, uh, well, not delayed SCV scout, just knows his opponent is in this area. Gonna hide the SCV for maybe a little bit. No, he is just gonna be going in. It is past the 430 mark, and this is the time when speed will be starting, as we do see it starting now. And his main goal is to get in, see if this gas is still mining. If it's still mining, then Juno knows that aggression could be coming. If there's nothing in that gas, then Juno knows, okay, he is safe for a little bit longer. Doesn't have to worry about a baneling bust or a lot of lings gonna be built. He just knows, okay, you're gonna get a lot of queens coming out. We're approaching 507. Gonna get a creep tumor out, and is he gonna throw down the spine? No, not at 515, so I'm a little bit off there. Will he get a spine? That is the question now, as those Hellions are now coming on out. This could be bad news for Potato right now. And maybe wondering why I'm calling Potato and not like Titan. And that is just to not confuse him with the Protoss player. And, uh, I don't really want to pronounce this in, uh, Korean, so... It is going to be Potato. Whether it's wrong or right, I don't honestly care all that much. We do have the Hellions going to come up, see this one creep tumor. Well, maybe they won't see it, but uh, it's going to take damage because the Queen did go in front. Two more Hellions being produced, and we'll be holding this area. And on Taldrim Altar, it is really hard for a Zerg player to take a third base, but when Hellions kind of do this contain down here, the Zerg player can just spread the creep this way because they're going to need to do that anyways. And oh my god, Lane's coming on. Those Hellions do get surrounded. One goes down so far. Those Hellions low on HP right now. Ling's going to keep on chasing them. And Jenner's going to lose another one. Is he going to? It's so close. And those Ling's trying to get a hit off. You can see them. And there we go. That Hellion does go down. 
Another Hellion does join, and those Lings do immediately turn tail and run away. Meanwhile, more Lings gonna come take out these destructible rocks. Juno, what is he doing? Gonna be going for another barracks. So it doesn't look like he's gonna be playing mech, us also getting stamped, which is a big indicator. Factory is gonna lift up, but barracks is gonna be built on this reactor, so gonna be playing bio. This will most likely be getting a tech lab and gonna get tanks because Juno is not one of those players who goes Marine Marauder Medivac like Tejo, Rainbow, or um, Polk. I think those are the three Terran players who mainly will actually go a TVZ without building tanks. And the Ling's gonna get us around, get two Hellions. They're still on creep, so that is why those Ling's can do that. And Juno has to start taking off those tumors. And instead, he's just gonna go in here, wants to see the timing of this third base. Is it up or not? Ling's going there right away, but they are off creep, so they can't get us around to the Hellions. Take out one anyways. And we all know how crucial it is to keep these Hellions alive, because once you lose them, Zerg has complete map control. And this is what I was talking about on Taldra Malta. It is hard to take your third base, but it's still easy to spread your creep. These Hellions can't really just shut down your creep. There's a lot of area for these Hellions to cover. And another Hellion getting surrounded. Very nice micro by Potato right now. Doing a great job at dealing with these Hellions. Going into the Lost tab, we do have General actually losing more than Potato. But of course, creep tumors don't count as lost. But I don't know if he's actually killed any. This one queen coming on out. We do have three queens. Worker count is 39 SVs, 250 drones. Juno is getting up his third base. Hellions only at two, so they're just gonna watch this one watch out. Those lings have been proven to be pretty darn strong. And the spire has been built. Has Juno used any scans? No, he has not. And ooh, Juno. Being so uh, no, he's not supply. Got the Zerg player though. His supply was way upside down after losing an overlord, and that's kinda odd when you're a spectator. It always says Supply Depots. What BM? But, uh, eight banelings being morphed as Jinro is moving out the sub-11 minute mark. And this is what you do. You don't want the Zerg player having all the gas in the world when it comes to, uh, Muta building time. So you move out, force a lot of banelings to be produced, and now, like, four or five Mutas can no longer be built. And again, Jinro taking out this gas, and one of the Protoss games on this map, it just showed how valuable sniping this gas can be. Taking out like two or three times kind of stops them from mining about 500 gas. Meanwhile, Jinro hasn't really started his upgrades just yet, does have an eBay. Has he scanned that main yet? No, he has no idea if it's going to be Infestors or Mutas at this time. And it's approaching that 11.30 minute mark, so Mutas will be hitting. No missile turrets are up. Jenner's defenses are going to be very thin. Lean's coming in, and Jenner with some nice micro does a defend against those Burrow Banelings, but a scan does come down, and Jenner takes them out. Oh, that anticlimactic. I was kind of hoping the Banelings hit. Even though I love Jenner, seeing Burrow Banelings is just so darn awesome. Nice scan by Jenner to see that. That would have been devastating just before the Mutas come. Could you imagine if all his Marines are well like. 70% of his Marines died, that would not be good. That would be like an auto win for a Zerg player. We do have plus one attack on those meters on the way, and eight moving across the field with one more in production. He has supply capped right now, building three more overlords going into the units. He does have 12 lovers, so that supply cap is stopping him from producing units. Now building four drones as one overlord does finish, immediately going back up to that supply cap. Mutas. One gets taken down, another gets injured about half health. Jinder now knows Mutas are out. Rocks being taken out, SCVs gonna be transferring on down here. Plus one flying care pace being researched by the Mutas as plus one attack does finish. 77 drones to 59 SCVs. And now since he's going this Muta play, he's kinda said, okay, I cannot go Ultralisks because he's not getting any of those ground upgrades. And Ultra's unupgraded against Bio that's gonna be upgraded, you're asking to lose the game. 
So when you go for mutas, transitioning into ultra is generally not the best idea. So once like the 20, 25 minute mark comes around between that time, that's when Broodlords are going to start coming out. He knows the high tech is going to be Broodlords and not ultras as long as these lanes don't start getting upgrades. And oh my god, holy bane lanes, 25 are out. And there is a bunker up. Marines are sitting behind that. The tank is there. A lot of Banelings going down. Those Marines get taken out. The tank up to six kills. And even more Banelings being taken out. More Marines in the back here to fend off against the Mutas. Only three SEVs going over into this Lost tab. Jinro showing that he is a very cost effective. Now losing about half the amount of damage he has done. Very nicely done. Some nice micro by these mutas trying to take out a supply depot. Whatever damage they can do will be great as that Jinro is supply capped right now. Not building a depot so you can imagine how much taking out that depot would do. We're about to see a supply drop I'm assuming from Jinro come out as he notices he is supply capped very hard. And this production is going to come. 15 minute mark, watch SC2 gears. There will be a gap here in Jinro's macro just because, again, does get supply cap. Three deepers on the way, does not use a supply drop, so instead he's just not going to build any units for some time. This is the time generally when you would want to build another base. You can see everything kind of stuck right now. Big supply cap by Jinro. Three deepers now finishing. Going to have to build a lot more because. Immediately hits supply cap yet again, twice in a row. That one supply depot gonna be good. The medevac, oh, not medevac, Mr. does get repaired. But it goes down anyways. Plenty of Marines are here. Two Mr. Turrets trying to go down this one at 20 HP. Now the Muta's gonna come in and take out this one, Mr. Turret. Muta's at summon red health. Now, Jinro has a handful of bio here, but the Muta's narrowly missed that. Jinro with a nice flanking idea. A lot of Lings and Banelings coming about. And uh, the Overlord spread, not really that good from a Zerg player. Has one right here, but this, a little bit too late because his creep kind of sees this area anyways. Be really nice if he had an Overlord, like, right here. Does have control of the Watcher and is spreading that creep decently, considering he is going with Mutas. And again, using these hotkeys on the hatches. I hate seeing this with Muta play. While you can inject fast with that, it is by far the slowest method of injecting because you have to click on each hatch, then click on a queen, and that is just not quick. It is very efficient because you can see when uh, the inject bars. But when you're playing this muta play, if you're not going to have like the backspace method, chances are you're going to see the mutas not be too aggressive because if they are, the injects will just not be there. Jenner skinning, taking all this tumors and ensuring there are no bird banelings. Looks like a flank is setting up for a Zerg player. Jinro, sieging back on up, does not want to get hit by that. Hive is now complete, which means Infestors could also be out. No Infestors are out there. 53 Banelings, though. And we do have the flank coming in. Jinro has a good split, putting some units up in. Metamax now can be dropping them after the Banelings go off. But holy Banelings. All the Marines do get cleaned up. Ten more being produced. And he still has some back at home. And while that was effective, the Zerg player really needs to like ex double expand after that. Because he's using so much gas in that attack, we can see Jinro still being more effective. Using Banelings is like saying, okay, I'm going to trade my army versus your army. And then we're going to re-macro. And every time you do that, you're lowering the Infestor count. So once you get these Broodlords out... You're not going to have more than five Infestors, which isn't really enough to make the Hive game scary. And he is coming back in. This time it is not flanked to Jinro. A little bit sloppy on that Marine Spling, but there we go. He has woken up. Very nice splitting. And keeps most of his units alive. 130 supply to 151. Still no expansions coming from the Zerg, and I really don't like that, especially because he has got so many minerals stocked up. And there's Marines going to be backing off, but there's Banelings catching up slightly on creep, giving that Banelings the speed boost they needed. More scans going down. Jinro trying to take off all those tumors. Big Fong Growth does go down on those Marines. Another one goes off. A handful of Marines do fall. Metamax keeping a few alive. Banelings morphing in. And again, all these Banelings lowering that Infestor count and also the Broodlord count. But generally, Zerg players are going to say, I want Broodlords. 
I can get them out. They don't really think about infestors. It's just one of those things that comes up, and they're like, huh. I have a lot of brood lords, but I have like two corruptors and three infestors. That's not much anti-air, and then the brood lords start falling, dropping like flies. So it's something you really have to be careful about when you start building these banelings after banelings. And the tank's doing a decent job at target firing all those banelings. Almost all of them blow up before hitting these marines, which means the mutas cannot do damage. Jinra at the same time trying to drop up here, but there are two spine colors. Key to note that fifth base now just being taken by Potato. Queen, relatively high on energy right there. Quickly going over to this queen. Very high. These queens... Relatively high. So not perfect injecting coming out of Potato again. Muta play just very APM intensive. It's hard to keep up on the creep injects in Muta Micro. You can generally pick two of them. You're going to give up on one. And Jinro now taking his fourth base about the same time. Actually a little bit earlier. No. This is his fourth base. Zerg taking his fifth base. But Jinro is being cost effective right here. We can see the PF morphing. They're going to kill that one Ling off. And uh, Jinro trying to take control of the middle of the map. But the Brood Lords, they're marching on down. We still have a handful of meters for good anti air. But Jinro does have a Thor on the way. But no mech upgrades. Actually, plus one attack. But these meters are at 1 1. The Lings are at 2 1. And of course, the bio is at 3-2, working on that plus-3 armor right now. Birdlords have shown themselves. Scan goes down, he can see those banelings. Now getting a, as big split as he can. Wants to have a huge concave, and now some beautiful micro going down by Juno. Has to micro those marines back, and does get them back just in the nick of time. And will be holding this with ease. 137 though, 2, 172, more Corruptors on the way. This is just freeing up supply for Potato, so he can go up with a very scary army. He is very gassed up, so taking this 5th base would have been much smarter to do earlier on in the game. Once he kind of, like, my general rule of theory is, you kill a Terran army, you expand. That is how you sh I think you should play ZVT. Just makes sense. Especially when you have this Muta play because you don't really have to worry about drops. When you go with Infestor play, you have to worry about the counter drops. But with Muta play, you shouldn't have to worry about drops because your overlord spread is going to be good. Which means you can always take a base after you uh, kill off their entire army. Relatively safely. Broodlords are going to come in. We do have a handful of Vikings. Not many Infestors, so he's going to have to choose what he wants to Fungal Growth. Is it going to be the Bio or the Vikings? With all these Corruptors, it probably should be the uh, bio force and lifting up units. I don't know what that was for. Maybe a mistake. Tank sieging up, and I don't know if I like siege tanks against Broodlords. But the Thor is here now. It's becoming a bigger thing to fungal go with the Vikings because the Thor adds a lot of DPS to both the Mutas and the Corruptors, which is the anti-air of Potato. So now he's got to do something about this. Broodlord's taking some uh, heavy, heavy hits by uh, the Thor siege. And the Vikings now coming on back. The Thor does fall. Another one on the way. Plus three armor just finishing, but a huge fungus on the bio. And you can see Potato choosing. That is what he wants to fungal. Not too worried about the Vikings. Just kind of ignoring those, taking those shots like a man. And notice where his Broodlords are. Right in this position means a Queen could come down here and transfuse them to keep them alive. All the tanks have been taken care of, and Jinro throws out the GG. Potato holding that spot, taking another base. Well played by him. Definitely some mistakes in that game. Jinro may have wanted to expand more. I don't know really where that went off. Maybe because Jinro wasn't doing all the drops. I think he could have capitalized a lot more on drop play just because the overload spread is like non-existent. Look at this vision. There is no overload spread. So Jinro may have just been too passive. The Zerg played a little bit greedy. Whenever Jinro came, he morphed in a lot of Banelings traded armies. So how do you do that? You be in a lot of places at once because what are Banelings not good at? 
dealing with small groups of units. Because when you have eight Marines, it's very easy to split them up. The Banelings not going to trade efficiently against that. And also, you pull with too many Banelings, then the army and tanks get into position. So, against this, I think Juno had to be a little bit more aggressive. So, we will be going into SE2 Gears, because I'm really curious about the Creep Injects. So, before the game, just because of his uh, hotkeys, I am going to be guessing... 7.6 seconds sub 10 minutes, and uh, 15 minutes of the game, I'm going to say that drops to 12 and 20 minutes of the game, that drops to a ridiculously high number. That is just my guesses, just based upon how he was playing. So let's go over into SC2 Gears, Potato on Taldrim Altar. And, uh, main building. Nine point three. Gave him a little bit of credit. Maybe he did a tumor early on. And that would suggest the nine second gap. I mean, right here, you can see he is relatively solid in this area. And still, I, w I <laughs> 12 minute. 10.4, still solid. He's a lot more solid. Then I would have thought 12.2 seconds right here, the 20 minute, 30.2, something horrible. And he was stacking a lot of minerals, so he could have done something with those injects, but up to this 15 minute mark, I mean, his injecting is relatively good. So what I really want to see are the Banelings more of that game. Ability groups, t only 10 fungals. 208 Baneling Morphs. Oh my god. One supply call down. And I want to go to the unit tiers. 15 minutes, I think I said. And here it is. Here's that supply cap. Maybe it was 12. This is more looking like a supply cap. So 12.06. Let's go in the game. Maybe that was it. No, wasn't here. It was that 15 minute mark, so... I really gotta come up with a better way to measure macro, this is telling me, because... Right here, this gap should look like this one. So... Eh, oh well. I'll figure a way to measure macro in due time. APM, you can look at that. I will be going into the next game, and if you're wondering why I'm casting so much lately, it's I'm giving this a try. Because I started casting live game stream. I did that for, like, my first year of casting. I masked games like no other. You wouldn't believe. I put in, like, 10 hours a day casting. However, doing that, I never really got to listen to my cast and uh, improve on them. So... When I went over to YouTube, I really focused on my, like, articulation and strategy and just learning the game. Because doing one cast a day means I can cast that game, then I can watch the replay and see things I missed, see words I have trouble with. And I think my pronunciation has become tenfolds better. Like, it's night and day between one of my casts in early 2011 and early, two well, now. I mean, the cast, it's night and day. Like, if, I think if I went back to stream casting, I would be really popular if all the big tournaments went around and, like, there were a lot more smaller tournaments to uh, give me publicity. Like, the Team Liquid Open came back. I think I would get a lot of views and people would be very impressed with me just of how far I've came. But I started doing YouTube casting because I wanted to do small game, like, one good game a day. And just learn a lot about the game and players. And I've done that. I think I've accomplished that. I know so much about the game. And I think my articulation is there. So right now, I'm thinking about, okay, if I cast more, what will that do to my subscriber count? How will that help me? Will, like, it scale? Like right now, I average four subscribers a day with one video. So if I put out 12 videos a day, will it go up to... 
like 20 subscribers a day, that's unlikely. Will I go up to 10 or 12 a day? That would make it worth it, in my opinion. So I'm just trying to see the growth of doing all my casts because I don't think I have to work on as much articulation. The thing I want to work on now is stamina. For when I go to a live cast, I mean, I've been doing one a day. That's easy. That's easy peasy lemon squeezy, man. One a day. My voice can handle that. I got to get my voice back to 10 hours straight. And uh, that's why I've started casting a little bit more. Kind of doing the mass gaming and listening to two or three, the ones I don't like myself casting. The TVPs I've casted of Jinro, I think, like, those have been my best cast ever. So, definitely, if you don't even like TVP, watch them because I casted it. So, hopefully that kind of makes sense. I'm sure I'll give this speech in another cast because not everyone stays this late in the game. And I don't like talking about things in the early game. If you notice, my casting is very analytical. And during the game, non-stop, I talk about the game. I don't really go off on tangents early on. Because then you miss what the player sees. And what the player sees is kind of how his build evolves. That's why he gets a missile turret. That's why he gets two bunkers. I mean, that is such good information to know. And when you go off on tangents, you kind of just miss those things. And I don't like that. So, that's what I'm trying to change. And if a lot of people don't hear my rants upon life and, like, my updates well, it doesn't really matter because the majority of the people come here for StarCraft cast. They don't come here about hearing about me, what I'm talking about and stuff. If that kind of makes sense. I guess in a way it does. So, my diehard fans, they enjoy this stuff at the end. And I give it to them. So, yeah. Subscribe. Hope you enjoyed that. And again, I read every comment, so if you really want something answered, put like a question mark at the end of it. Say, hey, Ip. And that kind of tells me you want it answered. If you just leave a comment and I don't know for sure you want it answered, generally, I may ignore it. And again, don't post spoilers in the comments. I haven't been removing that many of them, but if you're the first comment, one of the early ones, I will be removing you because that means the spoiler is going to come up without scrolling down on the page. And if I ever go to one of my videos and see a spoiler without having to scroll down, I'm going to remove it. Just out of courtesy to all my other viewers. So, uh, yeah, hope you don't take offense to me doing that. Take care, guys, and I will see you, well... Hopefully immediately, because I'm going to cast the second game between Potato and see how that goes. Peace out.